Hey everyone, and welcome to another skill capped video. In this one, we'll be taking a look at the best 2v2 comps in early Shadowlands Season 1. For each comp we are highlighting, we will give you a general idea of how each comp should be played and showcase some strengths and weaknesses. To rank how good all comps are, we will be using the tier list system. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look, and our course system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zpi, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today, link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked in the description. Let's start off with the S tier comps. These are the absolute best comps that you can play right now, and we see many players dominate the ladder with these. The first absolute best comp this season is Windwalker Holy Paladin. What makes this comp extremely good right now is the crazy damage output that Windwalkers have. Not only do Windwalkers have extremely high damage output, they also have a spammable slow immortal strike effect built into their Rising Sun kick great mobility, and also great defensives like Touch of Karma and Fortifying Brew. Holy Paladins are known for their great toolkit with tons of defensive CDs. Divine Shield, Blessing of Sacrifice, Blessing of Protection, and Avenging Wrath. Combining these two specs makes it extremely hard for the enemy team to land a kill, because there are so many defensives to rotate through before the Windwalker Holy Paladin team will run out of CDs and lose the game. There is also not a lot of strategy required to be successful playing this comp. Simply keeping the Windwalker alive with the vast toolkits both classes bring will often be enough to win the game. Windwalkers also work well with Discipline Priests, Resto Shamans, and Resto Druids. The second S tier comp that we'll be looking at is Disc Feral. This comp is extremely strong right now due to the high spread pressure ferals can create by bleeding both enemies. On top of the double bleed playstyle, rotting your enemies down, ferals also have very strong burst. If timed well, a feral disc can fear or cyclone the enemy healer, use berserk, stun the DPS, and completely blow the DPS up with the disc assisting with extra damage. Not only do Feral Druids do a lot of damage, they also have an amazing defensive toolkit with Survival Instincts, Bark Skin, Bear Form, and being able to shift slows, allowing them to easily escape from many scary situations. Disc Priests go extremely well with this playstyle as they provide a lot of extra damage and aggression to the Feral. This is a relatively hard comp to play though. The Feral has to play very well defensively and see enemy stuns coming. Windwalkers and Rogues can easily blow up a Feral who doesn't see it coming. The final S tier comp in Shadowlands Season 1 is Warrior Resto Shaman. Warriors have a lot of very high consistent damage output, paired with the 25% reduced healing taken for the enemy built into their Mortal Strike. The real power from Warrior is not only their damage, but more importantly, they are extremely tanky. A warrior with versatility sinning in defensive stance will take very little damage from the enemy team. On top of good damage and being very tanky, Warrior also has the best cooldowns in the game to assist their team with. Some examples of these are Intervene to soak up any melee attacks done to their teammates, the Overwatch PvP talent to reflect spells with, Duel to reduce enemy damage done, War Banner to reduce the duration of incoming CC effects by 50%, you get the idea. Combine this strong damage output, being tanky and having a great toolkit, and you have yourself an absolute powerhouse in twos. Warriors are best played combined with a Resto Shaman who is also very tanky, but they also go well with Resto Druids and Holy Paladins. Next off, the A tier comps. A tier comps are still very strong, but they usually require more skill than the best comps, and they have more weaknesses as well. You can still do extremely well with these comps though. The first one here that we'll be taking a look at is Discipline Priest Sub Rogue. As many of you may have noticed, Sub Rogues were extremely broken in the first week of Shadowlands Season 1. Since then, they've gotten some nerfs, but they are still very good. What makes this comp so strong is the fact that they have a lot of CC. They can constantly make setups by pairing rogue stuns with this priest CC, and the extra damage from the disc allows them to easily force defensives. They can blind a healer, force that healer to use their trinket, 
and then completely destroy a target with Shadow Dance, Shadow Blades, a triple cheap shot, and then easily land a kill with the additional Disc Priest damage. The weakness of this comp is landing kills on tanky targets with a lot of defensives. The more defensives a target has, the harder it is for sub disc to land a kill, as they have to try and create windows where the enemy team has no defensives left to use. The second A tier comp that we want to show you is Survival Hunter Disc Priest. This comp is also okay with Resto Druid, but Discipline provides some extra much needed damage. This comp does well by making large crowd control chains on healers, usually with a stun into trap, into fear. During these windows, they force you to use a bunch of defensives and then play defensively themselves until a trap setup is ready again. Eventually, the enemy team will run out of cooldowns to survive the setup with, and they land a kill. The only weakness of this comp is tanky classes being able to easily survive your setups. If you face a warrior, for example, they will have something from their toolkit available to negate your damage in almost every setup. This is still a very strong comp, though. Another A tier comp is Rep Paladin Disc Priest. As you may have noticed, Rep Paladins have extremely strong burst, sometimes completely one-shotting people through their defensive CDs. This comp does very well by combining the very strong Rep Paladin burst with additional damage from the Priest. Usually they will try to CC someone with a Repentance on the healer, followed up with a Fear, then using a Hand of Justice with Avenging Wrath on someone and completely destroying that target. So big burst and even more damage from Disc Priests, why is this comp not in the S tier? Well, even though Rep Paladins have very high burst windows, their main weakness is mobility. They often struggle to reach targets due to getting kited and slowed for a long time. If you work together to help the Rep Paladin connect and get his burst off, this is a very good comp. Another comp that falls under the A tier is Windwalker Resto Druid. Like we mentioned earlier, monks are one of the, if not the best melee DPS right now. Playing with a Windwalker is absolutely the best option for a Resto Druid. This comp does well by combining the extremely strong damage of the Monk with a crazy amount of CC that a Druid can provide, like Cyclones, Rake, Maim, Mighty Bash, and Roots. This allows you to CC enemies while the Windwalker destroys people. So, if this comp has so much CC and the damage of a Monk, why isn't it S tier? Well, the reason this comp is not higher up on the list is because Resto Druids struggle to keep up with high damage output especially early in the season. They are also very weak to Purge, which Shamans and Priests have. Purge can remove heal over time effects from the Druid, greatly reducing their healing. After showing you all these melee comps, we also have one caster comp which we think falls under the A tier, Elemental Shaman paired with a Holy Paladin. What makes this comp so good is Elemental's crazy high damage output paired with the short cooldown Paladin stuns. The Shaman starts with flame shocking both targets and rotting them down to then stun someone at relatively low HP with the Hand of Justice or Lightning Lasso, and the goal is to then blow them up with some big burst. What makes this caster comp stand out a bit in this melee heavy meta we see right now is the ability of elemental shamans to kite melees very easily. They do so with the return of Frost Shock, a slow without a cooldown. The weakness of this comp is that they have no consistent CC other than a couple of stuns as Hex is dispelled by many classes and on a cooldown. Elemental Shamans can also be played fairly well with a Restoration Druid for more CC or a Discipline Priest for a bit more damage. Up next is the B tier. In the B tier, we'll see comps that you can do quite well on, but they do have more weaknesses and might struggle against the S and A tier comps. Let's start off with Unholy DK, best paired with the Holy Paladin. Unholy DKs are extremely strong in PvE right now and have great damage output. This damage, paired with the short CD Paladin stuns, can create some nice kill opportunities. However, DKs have a few key weaknesses in PvP. They are not as tanky as Warriors and take a lot of damage from other dominant melee classes right now. On top of taking a lot of damage, they also lack any major mobility like Windwalkers for example. Even though you can stay alive quite a long time by keeping Chains of Ice on the enemy target and kiting them around until you find a kill opportunity, DKs do not have a Mortal Strike effect like some other melees right now. This makes it easier for the enemy healer to simply outheal your damage. Do not get discouraged though, you can still do well on this comp. The next comp under this B tier that we'll be looking at is Fire Mage Sub Rogue. Like we mentioned earlier in the video, rogues were completely broken in the first week of the season, but have taken some nerfs since then. Rogue Mage has been a popular comp in both 2v2 and 3v3 in WoW PvP for years. This comp does well by having short, very fast-paced games. They try to force as many defensives as possible within a few setups to try and create a kill window. 
all before running out of time and not being able to stay alive anymore due to a lack of healing. This comp can do very well against classes which are not very tanky and do not have too many defensives to work with. However, when facing Rogue Mage against, let's say, a Holy Paladin and a Warrior, where you have to get them to use their Defined Shield, Trinkets, Blessing of Protection, and so much more, the Rogue Mage quickly runs out of time to force that many cooldowns and create a kill window in such a short time. Next up, Mistweaver Arms Warrior. Like we mentioned earlier in the video, Warriors actually have some S-tier comps available. So, why is this comp all the way down in the B-tier? Well, Warriors do well by being extremely tanky and having high damage output. Mistweavers, however, are very squishy and do not provide much for their team other than a stun. The way that you can be successful as this comp is using your mobility as a Mistweaver very well against the enemy melees, making it hard for them to catch you, all while keeping your mana level stable. The Mistweaver is the weak link in this comp right now, as they are not good in the current meta. However, if you can stay alive long enough, your warrior might be able to land a kill for you. Another comp which is in the B tier right now is Enhancement Shaman, best paired with a Holy Paladin. Even though this comp is not very popular, you can still make it work. Enhancement Shamans run into a lot of the same problems that DKs do. They are fairly squishy and do not have the MS effect. The way that you can do well as this comp is to keep up your consistent damage and try to force defensive CDs that way. Then, when the enemy is not expecting it, have the Paladin stun someone and blow them up with Ascendance. Shamans can do some crazy burst right now with the new Doom Winds Legendary. Creating windows where you can do this effectively is a big part of your win condition. Enhancement also synergizes quite well with Resto Druids in 2v2. Alright, the last comp that we'll be placing in the B tier is Shadow Priest Resto Shaman. Shadow Priests have a lot of defensive cooldowns. They have Greater Fade, Dispersion, and Void Shift. On top of having good defensives, they can do a ton of damage as well if left to free cast. This comp is played by keeping the Shadow Priest alive long enough to rot people down. The only reason this comp falls under the B tier right now is because Shadow Priest dots are dispellable, and in this melee heavy meta, melees can easily shut Shadow Priests down with stuns and interrupts, making it hard for them to get any of their damage off. Alright, enough of the B tier, time for the C tier. With all the comps that we mentioned previously, you may ask yourself, where are all the casters at? With C tier comps, it might be hard to get to the top of the ladder, but you can still do well in certain matchups. The first C tier comp that we'll be looking at is Balanced Druid plus Resto Shaman. We're sure you've seen some videos of a Balanced Druid one-shotting someone with a Convoke the Spirits cast, or even experienced it yourself. As this comp, your goal is to rot people down with the Balanced Druid dots and forcing defensives that way. Then, once you have enough Astral Power, you try to chain multiple Star Surges which can hit for a lot and try to land a kill. What makes this comp fall under the C tier though is the fact that Balanced Druid's dots are easily dispellable. On top of that, the moments where Balanced Druids can do a lot of damage, which is during Incarnation and when having full Astral Power, are very easy to predict and line of sight. You can still do well with this comp if you control the enemy team with Cyclones, preventing them from using major defensives during your burst windows. The next comp that is very popular yet falls under the C tier is Affliction Warlock with Arresto Shaman. For sure that if you face one as a melee, you're probably getting very frustrated by their slow legendary. Your goal as this comp is the same as many other dot classes, keeping the Affliction Warlock alive long enough to the point where you can rot people down or maybe get lucky and have someone die due to a big unstable affliction dispel. However, in the current extremely melee heavy meta, Warlocks are having a hard time surviving. You will have to kite a lot using your Demonic Circle, Gateway, and even the Night Fae Teleport ability to stay alive constantly. Good Warlocks can pull this off, but most melees at higher rating know how to counter this perfectly and their healers will constantly be dispelling all of your dots, making it extremely hard to get any pressure. The last comp that we'll be covering in this video is Demon Hunter Resto Shaman. As many of you who played BFA will know, Demon Hunters were both extremely strong and therefore extremely popular. Being tanky, having crazy consistent damage output, and a ton of self-healing and defensives. This comp is played by mana burning the enemy healer to a point where he has no mana left, and trying to combine your stuns with Glaivestorm for big damage windows, forcing defensives, and eventually getting a kill. However, Demon Hunter is far from as good as it used to be. They got nerfed a lot in Shadowlands, their self-healing, no more built-in 100% dodge chance during their blade dance, and their damage is a lot less as well. On top of these issues, they also run into the same problem that enhancements and DKs do. 
they are fairly squishy and do not have an MS effect. This might make it a lot harder to be successful as this comp than it was in BFA. However, with dedication, you can still make it work. Anyway, that concludes our tier list for early Shadowlands Season 1 in 2v2. We hope you got some insight into the current meta, and hopefully understanding these comps will help you to push your rating on the ladder and choose your favorite comp. Make sure to like and subscribe, because more videos are coming soon. We'll see you in the next one.